Many years ago, Pastor Paul Eninche used to be a member of our church. The Dunamis church was born because I gave him direction. Could have gone to London and be reading medicine and miss that direction. But I, I gave him direction by the Spirit of God. And today that direction has, is a blessing in his life. And every time you see a rabbit says he gave birth to an elephant, madness is worrying it. Any day you see an antelope who's claim that he is the father of an elephant is he remain cloth to pull he already ran mad and if you are an offspring of a lion you cannot be a rat i am of the generation of giants i cannot be tired It is no longer a joke. No, not at all. Well, as it is right now, Abel Damina is giving it back to back to the well-established, let's put it that way, um, the Daddy Geos. And those that have big domes, those that have big cathedrals, those that uh, have a deep pocket, those that have private jets, those that have uh, helicopters, those that can gift you without giving you. You know what I mean? They will say, give me and God will bless you. Well, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? These people, they have branches all over. In fact, certain people have said that these are just business centers littered all over the places. Uh, they are called branches with the headquarters. That these people only fashioned their church according to business model. Well. Abel Damina said he used to be part of these people that he was into the prophetic, he was into um, the, 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 the financial, the prosperity gospel as he calls it. He said he was into all of this and things were flowing fine, money was coming in, everything was so good. But he got to a point, he said to himself, when he discovered life, not because he didn't have an idea of it, but when he came to him more clearly, he said, look, I have to do what I have to do now. If you've been on this platform, you probably must have heard some accusation here and there flying. They said, oh, he committed adultery in 1865. One person even said, I know of a lady. She's my spiritual daughter. She's my spiritual daughter. Uh, this and that had happened. Uh, her name is Ufom M M M Bom. Well, a lot of uh, accusations flying right, left, and center. Um, but how does that stop? Us from listening to what Abel Damina is saying. I think majority of these pastors, uh, they are acting like politicians. They think that people are listening to Abel Damina because he is sinless. Or are they trying to tell us all have sinned? Abel Damina is a sinner. We are also sinners too. Or they are saying we are not sinners. Our own dirt is not out there. Abel's dirt is out there. Why is he acting like holier than thou? What exactly is Abel Damina trying to achieve? Now, there is a man called Paul Enenche. Of course, you are going to listen to, um, they call him the godfather of all. I don't know if he's really or he's part of the general. Um, don't think these people don't meet. Yes, uh, just like how they have the G7, or is it G7 plus one? The powers. Yes, they do meet in Nigeria too. The daddy geos, they meet to discuss, to make sure that they are all on the same page. Well, Abel Damina said he used to be part of this G7 plus one in those days. But when his teaching started uh, deviating from the normal, bring money, God will bless you and all of that, they called him. And um, after he had done talking, preaching, speaking to them, they said, okay, we have heard you, but try and uh, take it easy. All that you have said, is not out of the scriptures but uh, we have to spoon feed these people uh, that is how it is supposed to be well now we have um, Paul Enenche he said that Abel Damina is a rat and that he is from the generation or from the lineage of giants this journey is going to be rough because we will be having Brother, Prophet Joshua Iginla and others. Ibiomi is also going to speak. On this matter, this one is more than tight. This one is something else. 
Really? Um, just today, I had the honor, your first ever driver, even though he said something very nice on air, that is Pastor Tony Okoro, that uh, you never called him driver, and there was no, no arrangement, no formal arrangement for him to start driving. Yeah, we just, we just, he just loved me and we started relating and that's it. So, so, that so he, 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 he told me some very interesting stories, for instance, that uh, um, he was ordained on the same day, 1996, 97, 98. 1996 those, February. Yes, he was ordained on the same day with somebody with Dola. Paul and Odola. Then, and then um, Eninche. Yes, him, Paul and, Odola, and Paul, and Paul Eninche so were ordained the same day right there. The same Eninche. Same service. So why will he now say he doesn't know you? Well, time will tell. We are from the generation of giants. See all the way, God servant Bishop David Oedipo, God servant Pastor Oedipo, you see largeness, Archbishop Bessie the house are the lion of blessed memory, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, and every time you see a rabbit, says he gave birth to an elephant, madness is worrying it, any time you see a rabbit, an antelope, who said he gave birth to an elephant, he ran mad, <laughs> you hear what I said, any day you see an antelope, who's claim that he is the father of an elephant is he remain cloth to pull he already ran mad he remains to pull cloth and if you are an offspring of a lion you cannot be a rat did you hear what i just said weight does not carry to any time you see an antelope say he is the father of an elephant it's a schizophrenic antelope with manic depressive illness with bipolar disorder with psychosomatic illness. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. With some form of narcissistic personality disorder. Hey! Then the video went out within the week and he discovered that the person is calling a giant actually was given birth to by the rat. And now they are quiet because they don't know which other videos are lined up to be released. The reason why we release the video is because they say I was lying. And it's important for me as a leader to show that I was not lying. So we gave them small evidence so that they can see that we are not lying. 1997, when we are there training those giants how to pray. It's time for people to know that you carry one nobody on this side. It's time for you to drop down your weaknesses and take the strength of God. there to preach to some young young students and we were praising God one of the products of that meeting is my beloved son Paul Eneche 
You know, I had last Sunday, somebody laughed at me in his church and called me a thief and called me a rat claiming to give birth to an elephant. <laughs> no, my damn thief. Love does not envy. Love is not jealous. Look at your Bible. Look at it. It's not jealous and envious. Hmm? He said somebody wave dick past you. Now you're picking. <laughs> okay. John the Baptist was the one who baptized Jesus. Is it because of Jesus? Okay, you ordained the man, but the man don't pick past you. <laughs> it's just jealousy. Just what? And some of you listen to such persons. Please. If you see that thing, pass it. In one small corner where you are. You are not afraid. These are men with results. They are men with what? Results. Okay, we are all results. <laughs> they brag about houses. They brag about ministerial success to be congregation size, to be cars, estates, money. And they say because they have all of that, me, I don't have that. I'm a failure and there is success. So their definition of ministerial success is based on material acquisition. I am going to give every one of you pastors an opportunity to repent tonight and then to go back immediately after this convention and restitute your ways with your congregation. Make it clear to them. Anyone who is not paying his tithe is not going to heaven. Full stop. It's what Satan offered to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 4, he offered to him houses and cars, and Jesus rebuked him. And what Jesus turned down is what preachers today are flaunting as ministerial success. You can tell where the church is exactly. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 3, look at it. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 3, PJ. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 3, read for me. If any man teach otherwise and consents not to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to God the Anybody that plays down on the doctrine of Christ. Next verse. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. He is proud, knowing nothing. Next verse. Verse 5. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. From such pastors, withdraw yourself. Don't listen to them. They have nothing to offer you other than greed, avarice, and the doctrine of Balaam, which actually is measuring a man's value by material things. He's a destitute of the truth. Look, give me the message of that verse 5. Message translation, PJ. Message, First Timothy 6, 5. Eventually, there's an epidemic of backstabbing and truth is but a distant memory. They think religion is a way to make a fast buck. So they are using their Bible to be making money. You know what I'm talking about. And then they now say, don't mind Damina. Damina is full of bitterness. Damina is envy. When I see him preaching, I say, this man has gone into bitterness. He has gone into heavy envy. Many of you don't know. That man was at the top. But he sees small boys rise up. So the thing, he can't stand it. That's the biggest problem he has. God, this scripture is for him. Jealous and envy. He's so jealous of... The, check all the money he's attacking at the men where at the top. Everybody rising is not a problem to him. Was me, envious of what? The template you people are using for your materialistic gospel. Some of the template, I'm the one that gave to you people. What is there to envy? Envy lying to people in the name of the Bible and collecting their money. Lying to them that if they don't pay tithe, they will not go to heaven. Lying to them that the size of your giving determines the weight of your greatness. Lying to them that you must pay tithe 50 years in advance. Lying to them that if you give to the poor, you will be like the poor. Is that what I'm envying? You must release to the level of his blessings on your life. Or on your way to the grave. That idea of telling you, just give and you will prosper is a scam. As God has blessed everyone, even so, let him give. To the same level, let him give. So he can stay alive. It is fraud. Those people, they are robbers in the name of Jesus. And be careful of anybody that tells you to sow a seed for your healing, for your miracle. Because they are scamming you, they are robbing you in the name of the gospel or in the name of miracle. You won't need a car to travel. You won't need an aeroplane to travel. 
You will just say, I want to go to London. And you'll be in London. Whether you believe it or not, the time is coming when you won't need visa. Fly by night, guys. I'm not a fly by night. I met Pastor Fred, one of my friends in Abuja. I've not seen him for years now. And he said to me, Dr. Damina, you know, um, please have mercy on the boys. <laughs> Please have mercy on the boys. I didn't understand what he was saying. It was later on, Pastor Philemon was telling me that what the man is saying is that the, the things you are teaching are too heavy for them. You should calm down small. Please have mercy on the boys. <laughs> so when Pastor Philemon gave me understanding, I started laughing. So when I started laughing, the guy now, now, the guy now said, we'll meet later. So we met later. He said he was in Redeem Camp in Lagos. And one senior person in Redeem was telling him that there's this boy, that there's this boy in a quiet bomb. Hey, I mean, uh, this boy. So the guy said, he said to him, do you know who you're talking about? Do you know who you're talking about? He's not a boy. Who don't be deceived by his physical make. He's not a boy. He said, that person you're talking about is the one who ordained Paul in nature to ministry. He's not a boy. Who. Stop calling him a boy. He's just blessed with a good body. The guy has been around. This guy has been around. This boy has been around. Next year also, I should be 40 years in ministry, preaching this Bible. No reading Bible, preaching it. So I'm not a boy. I didn't just appear. I didn't just emerge. You know, my antecedents are very, very clear. The fathers know it. Those they call fathers. Some of the people they even call fathers of faith in Nigeria are not older than me. They are not older than you. Leave that in. I'm not joking. I'm not, listen to me, I'm not joking. So when they are saying that the is talking against the fathers, who are the fathers? Who are the, am I not a father? Huh? In this country, I am a father of faith in Nigeria and around the world. That man from you know, demon entered that man. And I'm repeating it again. Can I tell you the whole truth about that man? That man is preaching out of envy and jealousy. I'm from Nigeria. There are men of God, God has elevated far away from him. People that he felt that he was ahead of them. That they have overtaken him. They did not only overtake him. The gap is everlasting gap. The gap they gave to him all the days of his life, he will not even see their back or the way they went. So out of envy, he is preaching to poison people's mind, not to bring for the work of God to continue. Oh my God. Hear me. If sons and daughters who have once been your sons and daughters choose not to call you their father they have a right to move forward to the other place undermining a son who have become a father in the name of casting as passion and integrity in to the to the son and making or diminishing his relevance and relegating him to the background you were never a father part of christianity if somebody is your son you don't need to force the person to call you your son his son the people they are calling fathers are my boys yes. they are my boys I'm their father, whether they recognize me or not. Welcome back. Now, you might think this is all about sonship, fatherhood, and all of that. No, it is more than that. Abel Damina is actually rocking the boat of uh, many of these geos and wannabe geos, and is um, kind of puncturing their money that this geos they are so comfortable with the life that they are living if anyone who is connected to them who knows who has information who knows the gameplay the game plan how things are done manipulations and all of that they become angry at first they fired at uh, Abel Damina in a way that uh, kind of um, portrayed that they did not like what he was saying as if it was hurting them but he was actually puncturing their money back now Abel Damien according to information that we have out there born August 29, 1960 he is the founder and leader of Power City International headquarters in Uyo Akwaibo now, if Abel Damina wanted to expand ministry like others have done, 
loan money, give prosperity um, promises and uh, what have you. Definitely, we are very sure that Abel Damina would have acquired what he needs to acquire. Abel Damina would be 64 years old from information out there. So he's not a boy. Abel Damina is not a boy. He might look the way he looks, but he's 64 years of age. And that's not a boy. And the years that Abel Damina started, he is not a boy in ministry. Now, that does not mean that other people did not receive the call or mantle ahead or whatever. That does not make them your senior per se. Everyone has his or own niche and you must find yours. Now, talking about uh, Abel Damina being envious, I don't know if he's envious. I don't know what is within him or inside of him. But what I do know is that he is teaching good to a certain extent. Let us be sincere. He's teaching good to a certain extent. Many of these uh, wannabe pastors or wannabe geos, and of course, the real daddy geos, the ones that have branches everywhere, all of them are following a blueprint. And many of them are quick to say, oh, this is from the Bible, this is from the scriptures. Don't forget that the same scriptures can be misinterpreted. The same scriptures can be mistranslated. People can pick portions of the Bible and use it to achieve their aim. Look at uh, Muslims when they want to pick Bible verses to do what they do. They go about it trying to ridicule, trying to create uh, some kind of, uh, they will say, oh, the Bible is not the word of God or the Bible is not of God. Let us, let us put it that way. Because not everything inside of the Bible is the word of God. There are certain things that are not in line with what God wants. So let us say the Bible in entirety. They will say, oh, it is conflicting. It is not true. It's full of lies. That's all they say. And they bring verses that they do not have proper understanding of. And they begin to repeat that. I'm sure you must have heard or seen them during that uh, Muslim um, fasting period. That's when they decide to attack bible attack christians doctrines and teachings rather than focusing on their quran so it means that a pastor can pick a, a, a verse and keep repeating some of them are repeating simply what they were taught in whatever bible school so abel damina is simply demystifying and opening the eyes of a lot of people and abel damina is not the only one there are other people um, at least I know of one who made it clear that there is no part of the Bible that says if you give tight, you will be richer. No. Maybe God will give you ideas, opportunity, and that's if you are prepared for it. And if you know how to manage. There is this principle that God has given to everyone. When you talk about the goodness of God, the sun, rain, food, is available to even that witch or to that person. So God has different levels of good. The sun, the rain, everything shines on both good and bad. So about this tight. Now, Oyedeko went further. When he realized that people were saying, it's not true, it's not true. He said, hey, you know, if you don't tight, there is no security. If you don't tight, there is no security. Meaning you can attain money, wealth, and all of that without tithing. But you cannot secure it. Canker worms will eat. <laughs> so he said all of that. Now, there are people who will be kind of uh, happy about that. Yeah, yes, canker worms will eat. The truth is this there are people also out there who are rich who do not pay tight so are they paying tight to some other forces that's another question are they paying tight to some other forces a big question is it that you are tightening for the purpose of purity light or you are tightening for the purpose of darkness. People tight in the kingdom of darkness too. 
not really the 10% kind of, but they do their own form of tithing in their own way. And um, about this tithe of a thing, <laughs> it really rattled the bones of many of these Jews because they weren't getting that huge returns. So many of them started bragging, saying, it is not your tithe that we are, even if you don't tithe, our ministry is fine. That's because over time, all the money they have acquired, they have put it into business, such as private university schools and other businesses. So they are okay. When will you stop giving those money? No, they want to keep collecting it, taking the money. And some of them have even branched into spiritual items, like the other prophet. They sell everything. They sell, you can, they even sell spiritual chair in church. That one you have to pay to always sit on it. There's nothing they don't sell. It's just the abuse of it. So let's go back to this spiritual thing, this sonship and fatherhood thing. It, it's a practice that uh, has gone viral. It's a practice, in fact. There are people who are looking for spiritual sons. Why? Spiritual daughters? Why? They want to be father over. They want to be in control of people's uh, decision. They want to be respected. They want to be honored. And even at times worshipped. I'll give you an example. Why will you kneel for your pastor? Why? When he's walking down. If in the Bible, the same was done to the apostles and they quickly cautioned them saying, no, do not, do not bow, do not kneel, do not uh, worship us this way. And then some pastors might be like, no, no, this is honor. It's different from worship. Go and check the Hebrew or Aramic translation or interpretation or the proper context of that verse, you will realize that they were doing the same thing that pastor. They will say, no, it's not me. It is the grace in me. That's how funny many of them, out of their hard-heartedness, oh no, it is not me that they are leaning for. They are leaning for the grace. Which grace are they leaning for? Can they see the grace? Okay, they can't see. They are seeing the manifestation of it, but they are kneeling to that grace for to you that's just it so uh, these are some of the pentecostal excesses that we are seeing prophetic ministry excesses that we are seeing they are kneeling to the grace they are bowing to the grace what what, what is that i don't get it I, I do understand that when you are filling the gap as the CEO or the daddy geo or the head of a ministry, there are certain uh, sacrifices that you are that you have um, gone through. You've put a lot of sacrifices into a lot of things, and uh, at least as a human being, you expect some form of ah, thank you, man of God, thank you, God, thank you, Lord. Because um, when you're on that journey of spirituality with God backing you. There are things that you experience as a human being too. And you begin to say, oh God, what's going on? And maybe you hear a voice saying, this is a test to make you stronger. But it's happening to you, it's happening to your family. So some of these things are sacrifices and uh, you know the journey to be strong, to be powerful, to be ready, to be prepared and to keep fit. Yes, but that does not mean that Someone will have to kneel down when they see you walk by. Some even prostrate on the floor. Some women even do these things and they can't do it for their husband. Can't do it for their husband. So uh, these, these things are excesses that we are talking about. They are excesses. Well, Igila has made it clear and I think someone might deny you as a father does not mean you do not have the right to talk about it until this sonship and fatherhood thing is abolished we'll keep having the same thing it is true that uh, mr paul Enenche knew where he was going to somehow after all a medical student a doctor back in those years what he studied would or could have made him big in his own way maybe he would, he would have um, maybe and don't forget that his, his wife is also a medical doctor. So both of them could have uh, joined hands together and become big. Yes, they could. 
maybe not as big as what they are now because now offering tight so they had this call they had this feeling they had, they, they, they had this thought within them this is what we want to do this is how we want to go about it so Paul and Enche was humble trying to learn from those that are there so he came in contact with uh, Abel Damina Abel Damina is also a power power weight because Abel Damina said something and he said if I am lying. Let the fathers come out to say I'm lying. He said there is a meeting of the G7s plus one. You know what I mean? The G7, the great that the Geos. He said he is part of that meeting that they invited him. You can't join. They have to invite you. And who are these people? One, Archbishop Late Benson Idaoza. Two, Adeboye. Oyedepo. Just mention the names of those big, big, big time, big, big, WF Kumui, big, big, all of those big, 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 they meet. They have a private meeting where they come to talk. Abel Damina is part of that meeting. They said they invited him in like, come and join us. You are not a boy. But since uh, growth in ministry, has to do with physical, material things. Like he said, it's not as if Abel Damina could not have told that line or pathway. If Abel Damina, regardless of if he committed whatever that people are saying, committing of this and that does not stop Abel Damina from being big if he wanted to be big. That's the truth of it. It doesn't stop him. As long as he can manifest the gifts and do what he does, he will simply look for a PR that will help him um, launder his image and clean him up and then he will continue what he's doing he will continue ah talk about scandal many of these geos they have scandals underneath them that they have talked in so they said oh it's because of that that is why his ministry people now run away it is not true unless he's a serial sinner doing these things to a lot of people and those people are the, the foundation of his ministry and they run away then if they are not if it's just choir member this unless god decided to take his hands out of his life and say okay now this is what i want you to do now he said i, I never expected i was going to do this um, i think uh, i'm kind of thinking so that what abel damina is doing is born out of conscience you are doing something it's a practice you are doing something you learned it from bible school you are doing something is what you saw this spiritual father or this daddy geo or generals in christ you see them doing this thing uh, but somehow something is tugging you within saying look what you're doing is not right this is not in line with the scriptures this is misinterpretation misalignment of the scriptures this is not right. This is what I told you. This is the revelation I gave you. This is what this verse is saying. And you have this thing within you, bothering you for a long time. Then something happens and you say, look, I think it's time that I speak what God has been telling me. You see, the ways of God, the ways of God, the, the ways of God are mysterious. They are mysterious. So, Abel Damina, to a certain extent, um, people might, might misconstrue what he's saying, misinterpret what he's saying, but to a larger extent, Abel Damina is speaking good. That's the truth. But for those wannabe geos who want to fleece members, wannabe geos who want to take first fruit, <laughs> who want to take everything, they will definitely will not be in support of Abel Damina. In fact, in the comment section, someone said, if you want to remain poor, listen to Abel Damina. He wasn't referring to members. He's referring to wannabe pastors, wannabe bishops, wannabe prophets, wannabe evangelists. If you want to be poor, listen to Abel Damina. Yes, Abel Damina talked about his um, struggle in ministry when he decided to embrace light. He said things became bad that they could not even fund their cable station. They could not even pay for certain things. They had to take money out of his own pocket. He had to do some things. And he, he, he said, God visited in his own way. And someone paid 
for years and the person is still paying and everything is balanced that now he does not need he doesn't have to rob people lie to people promise them what does not exist sell them miracle anchor chief say i have used this on my sweat there is anointing in this room i need one i i need 50 50 people to come out now and sow seed according to your age sow seed for your children sow seed for your children's virginity sow seed there is nothing they don't see it so seed for for your gateway to heaven now they will start selling entrance into heaven ticket into heaven so seed so seed for this so seed some will even tell you there's nothing god will do for you if you don't so seed some will tell you forget just so seed on my altar that's it you are settled that's how bad it has become i don't know what your thoughts are you've listened to abel damina you've listened to paul and enche i'm referring to abel damina as a rat and um, saying abel damina has mental problems you know insults and that's coming from um, pastor <laughs> with his big dome he's referring to he might say i'm not insulting i'm only using scientific analysis blah 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 well he said what he said and you heard his uh, friend they are all together in uh, Oyedepo's ministry. Um, you heard what you said too. I'm talking of Ibiomi. It's so funny. So, so funny.